Here is the lunar module sitting back here, an object about 20 feet in size, let us say, measured across the top. What are the chances of a lunar module or an object like that being struck itself by a meteorite uh, impact while the astronauts are on the moon? Well, these events don't occur at any one place very often. And it's uh, essentially a problem of statistics. Uh, somebody a long time ago, and I don't know whether this estimate has been revised, said that um, you were probably safer walking around on the moon than you were crossing a New York street in terms of your actual hazard. I figure you're safer in a blast furnace than crossing a New York street. <laughs> there are uh, less meteorites than taxis. Eh? Right. Frank, do you have any other questions for Dr. McCauley? No, I, uh, I think not. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. McCauley. We'll certainly be calling on you again as... Jack, uh, have we left out any geological points you want to make at this point on this traverse? Well, I've been listening to the uh, voice, and uh, it looks like they're doing a very good job as they're going along here of uh, documenting and describing. And that's one of the major objectives, to really squeeze this uh, traverse uh, for all the possible information we can get. Thank you, Jack. We'll be back to you shortly. Let's uh, return now to uh, the moon and the air-to-ground signal and the picture from that camera. There it is with the sun's ray still uh, beaming across the lens. Shepard and Mitchell invisible to us at this moment. Frank, can you make them out from your monitor? No. No, they're, uh, they're gone, Jules. Uh, okay. The camera, of course, has not moved, uh, and the astronauts have uh, moved on to uh, Station A, so they are out of uh, camera range, but, of course, we can hear them quite well. There's a lot of conversation going on back and forth. We'll have more on Apollo 14 right after this message. Okay, just in the way of bookkeeping, uh, we need to double core and the pan and uh, a sample. This is Frank Reynolds uh, with Jules Bergman and with uh, Frank Borman, who has now joined us. And Frank, of course, was the commander of Apollo 8. And, uh, Frank, things started a little earlier today than uh, we had anticipated. Apparently, they decided to come out, uh, oh, about, uh, about two and a half, uh, two hours early, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Uh, it actually started, Frank, with uh, Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell during an EVA debriefing last night saying they needed an extra half an hour or so during the second EVA moonwalk. Then it turned out that the ALSA Central Station antenna was not aligned properly. They're getting only weak signals, so they have to go back to that EVA-1 site at the end of the second EVA, which means an extra 45 minutes or so. So the crew ended up get, getting about five and a half hours sleep, getting up almost four hours ago, and beginning the second EVA about two hours early. How's the spacesuit, Mitchell's spacesuit? Is uh, I'm glad you brought that up, because uh, it's amazing how stories run rampant on the wire services and other media at times. Even on ABC News last night, I was... Uh, sure, never, <laughs> never, on, never on ABC News. They didn't consult Reynolds or myself. The problem was, well, we Glad went out and patched... Me, no. me up. Uh, Mitchell's suit has a loss rate, if you will, that's slightly uh, higher than spec. Like but it's no, it's no serious uh, problem, and there is no real leak, you could say. It probably has a bad O-ring somewhere along the way. What's a lot that? of us do. <laughs> no, sorry about that. What's that? Uh, a seal, uh, an O-ring being exactly like that. A seal that would go over uh, a hose inlet or a oh. matching thing. Or a uh, articulating joint or a swiveling joint. Well, obviously it's not causing them any difficulty because no. they've been very anxious to get out there. They've been out now for some time. Been on the moon uh, for 24 hours now. Let's go back to air to ground. Come on, air room. you probably get some of that from the bottom. Yeah, okay. We're still at Station A. Okay, uh, we copied uh, Alan in. I've got to say it's within specs, Frank. Six breaks as it is. It is it's not fine. He's a paid agent of the Okay, program. in the corporate, just for the fun of it, is going mm -hmm. back to November. Okay. Let's get it back. And uh, Al, uh, they'd like uh, a description of the uh, surface where you drove the uh, corpus.
Perfect. I think that one's really well. traverse to the east, I don't think there's any significant, significant in direction necessarily. Uh, Shepard says they found more rocks and more boulders, uh, distinctly more than to the west, uh, which I suspect is likely just a function of their getting closer to Cone and the ejecta from Cone, yeah. the debris hurled out. Get that by yourself? Yep. picture that uh, you have been seeing is the same one that you'll be seeing for quite some time uh, today because the camera is in that uh, fixed position and the astronauts are working out of camera range. We've had all this uh, conversation, the uh, news stories uh, late last night and uh, early today about uh, the uh, spacesuit uh, difficulty that uh, supposedly Ed Mitchell was uh, having. Of course, the, uh, the spacesuits are critical. They've got to work uh, properly and uh, perfectly. We thought it might be interesting to see what uh, Ed Mitchell has to say about that. Some time ago, Jules asked uh, Ed Mitchell, who was out there on the moon right now, uh, what would happen if either he or Al Shepard uh, had a failure in his uh, backpack systems. I think it might be uh, useful to hear what Ed Mitchell has to say. It depends on what portion of the backpack we lose. Uh, the types of failures we can have are electrical failures, communication failures, uh, oxygen or water problems. If we have oxygen problems, we have our OPS, our oxygen purge system, to help us get back to the lamp. The emergency bottle. The emergency bottle. If we lose water or cooling, uh, we can still use oxygen for cooling if we have to, but we do have our so-called b sliss our backup support. b sliss The fancy backup, hose. Yeah, the fancy hose that allows us to exchange water from one crewman to the next and to provide for cooling. Electrical uh, power failure is somewhat serious. However, we still do have the oxygen to uh, sustain life till we get back. Communications failures, uh, there are many modes of comm failures and we have backup ways to work around that. So there is not any single failure 
that uh, is detrimental to safety, we can get back. There are many failures that would cause us to short an EVA or terminate uh, sooner than we would like or reduce our capability in some way. I guess I've been around flying so long I've just become a believer in Murphy's Law. But looking at the worst possible situation, supposing <coughs> you and Al were on the, the rim of Cone Crater, a mile away from the Lyman effect, close to a mile, and one of the backpacks fails, either electrically or water or oxygen. Is there time, and can you get each other back to the yes, safe? Yes, indeed. Uh, the system is so designed that <coughs> with a combination of oxygen from the emergency bottle, in the uh, worst case condition, and using the water through the B-slit system, the, the hose, to the failed crewman, uh, we can very comfortably walk back to the uh, limb and probably even do some more uh, geological exploration on the way. It will not be a hurried rush rush job to get back. And it has not been a hurried rush rush job as you've been hearing in the air to ground radio communication from Ed Mitchell and Al Shepard on the moon. They've been m moving methodically is the best way and determinedly in a very businesslike fashion on, first, on the first moonwalk yesterday and now on the second moonwalk. One point we'd like to straighten out about emergencies or non-emergencies that sometimes get blown up to be emergencies. The suit leakage rate, the leakage rate of oxygen uh, in Mitchell's spacesuit is well, is well within the normal operating specifications. Uh, it is no cause for concern, nor has it ever been a cause for concern. Frequently we run into what you might call an information gap in dealing with the space agency, especially during a mission where uh, fig figures come out or, or words are issued on the air to ground radio and often technical competency is lacking in properly putting, putting them into perspective in time. It is our mission to put them into perspective, and we are here to tell you that Mitchell's suit loss rate on oxygen is well within normal operating specs. Okay, Jules, they are only about five minutes uh, behind uh, their timeline or schedule right now, so they are obviously uh, not in any great rush. We'll have more on Apollo 14 right after this message. Mitchell and Shepard, about 1,500 feet away from the lens, having finished their work at Station A, moving towards Station B, yeah, describing the terrain. Little, uh, can you see the boulders off to the side there on the map? Oh, yeah, sure, very well. I think, uh... Ah, you should be able to spot that little chain of craters just to the south of it. On the map, if, that, if that's where we think we are. Shepard Mitchell uh, describing the terrain uh, on their walk from station A to B. Still about 3,000 feet to rim. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry too much about the exact uh, position of uh, Site B. Uh, if your tears uh, are getting close to the general area, that uh, should be good enough on B. Okay. I think we're very close to it. I 